in the last few days everyone just keeps saying that the nifty is trading at about 22 times earnings right now nifty ka 21 ka pe hai and as a result it is slightly above uh, its long term average of about 18 19 uh, and so the nifty is not that expensive itna zyada mehanga nahi hai so aap nishchint rahe you know it's it's okay nifty is not that expensive everything is good but what if i told you that the comparison is wrong jo hum ye bolte hain ki nifty ka 22 ka pe hai aur uska long term average jo hai 17 18 uske compare thoda sa upar hai wo comparison hi galat hai the average that you're looking at and the numbers that you're comparing it to they're calculated very differently बहुत ज़्यादा अलग कैलकुलेशन है निफ्टी को अगर आप 10 साल पहले देखेंगे वर्सेस उसका जो बी आज का हम देखेंगे तो जो कैलकुलेशन है बहुत ज़्यादा डिफरेंट है सो इट्स लाइक वेइंग योरसेल्फ ऑन टू डिफरेंट स्केल्स एंड देन थिंकिंग दैट यू लॉस्ट वेट सो लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन अंडर द हुड एंड वट इज द एक्चुअल पी ऑफ निफ्टी एंड हाउ एक्यूरेट इज इट टू कम्पेयर टू द लॉन्ग टर्म एवरेज इफ यू लाइकिंग दिस वीडियो सो फॉर प्लीज डू कंसिडर लाइकिंग इट सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल एंड डू शेयर दिस वीडियो विद सम Currently feels the Nifty is not that expensive. Let's dive in. अच्छा तो आप मेरा स्क्रीन देख सकते हैं ये स्क्रीनर डॉट इन पर मैं हूँ और मैंने निफ्टी फिफ्टी ओपन कर रखा है आप देख सकते हैं कि मार्च 2021 हज़ार इक्कीस में यू नो इन मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन दी पी ई ऑफ द इंडेक्स वॉज थर्टी नाइन यू कैन सी का जो पी था वो थर्टी था right and then you go from march to april and then you'll see that the pe has dropped from 39 to 32 nifty ka drop jo ye pe ka hua hai wo kaise hua hai agar aap chart dekhenge nifty ka aap dekhenge ki 2021 march mein the nifty was around 14700 and then in april it actually went up a bit but more or less it has you know remain flat it has remained in that 14000 14 and 1/2000 range from march to april of 2021 however the pe of nifty went down from 39 to 32 without any change in terms of the price movement of nifty without any crash any kind of correction so what happened how is it that overnight nifty's pe went from 39 down to 32 so let's let's take a look at what exactly happened this is a chart of price to earnings ratio for the nifty for the last 25 years i'll share this link in the in the description you can take a look at it and the first thing that you'll note here is it says that consolidated versus standalone or stand loan versus consolidated it says the nsc published stand loan pe for the nifty up until march 2021 in starting april 2021 they switched to using consolidated earnings to calculate the nifty pe ratio matlab march 2021 tak nifty ka jo pe ratio tha wo stand alone tha april 2021 onwards they started using consolidated earnings which ideally should be the case should have been the case from the start to take a look at the pe ratio so consolidated earnings starting 2021 april so what does that even mean well, you might ask now, what is stand alone versus what is consolidated think of it this way let's say reliance industries that's one of the listed companies in the nifty now reliance industries you know that's like a parent company and then within that you also have geo you have reliance uh, uh, retail now geo is not a listed company reliance retail is not a listed company they are all part of the reliance industries however prior to march or april 2021 only the stand alone that is just for reliance petrochemicals business the earnings were added so far as earnings for geo or earnings for reliance retail is concerned they were not added similarly if you take a look at the hdfc bank then for hdfc bank hdfc securities or hdb financials these you know were were not they're still not independent listed entities 
The earnings for these were not included in HDFC Bank's earnings. And as a result, earnings were lower than what they should have been for these nifty companies prior to 2021. PE ratio is price divided by earnings. Now, if earnings are actually higher than what they are used for calculations, then of course the P PE ratio would come out to be higher. And so that is exactly what happened. When in April 2021, they decided to use the consolidated earnings, and that's the right way to go about it, the PE ratio went from 39 to 32 without any changes in, in the price chart of uh, the Nifty. So what does that mean? If I am taking a look at the Nifty PE today, which is about 22, if I use the same methodology of using consolidated earnings prior to 2021, March 2021, then my Nifty PE, instead of being 22, might be somewhere close to 27, 28. Today, I'm using consolidated earnings of all the entities. To calculate my PE ratio and this process only started in April 2021 this means that prior to April 2021 only standalone earnings were used which means that a lot of the earnings from Reliance big companies like Reliance Retail, Reliance uh, Geo, HDB Financial, HDB Securities and so on and so forth for many other Nifty 50 companies they were not included when calculating the price to earnings ratio for the nifty now this means that the long term averages that we are looking at you know of like 1718 is is a flawed system why because those earnings were not included so if the earnings were actually included then that pe ratio would actually go down which means that the long-term average that everyone's talking about of 17, 18 might actually end up being probably close to 12, 13. So if the average PE of Nifty is 12, 13 or in that ballpark, then at 22, do you think Nifty is cheap, slightly expensive or way more expensive? Probably even double the average uh, PE for Nifty over a long period of time. Think about that for a second. Now, some of you might be skeptical about this whole thing, but let me let me take you to the Nifty PE chart. I'm on a monthly chart. This is the long-term chart of the Nifty 50. Um, what I've done is I've you know I've gone ahead and made a logarithmic scale chart logarithmic because I'm considering a long uh, time span here right if I've, I've drawn a channel here all the way from the lows of 2009 so this is like a 15 year old chart and I'll specifically focus on uh, March and April of 2021 here you go March of 2021 nifty closed at 14,690 and then April it opens at 14,798. So as you can see, there's probably a 70, 80 point difference in terms of the val absolute value of Nifty. But at the same time, Nifty PE went from 39 all the way down to 32. So by that calculation, if you were using the standalone method that maybe today's PE would not be 22 it might probably be close to 29 or a 30 and so now if you compare that with the long-term average of say 17 or 18 that's way higher than the long-term average so let's take a look at what's going on so far as the nifty chart is concerned so again like i said this is a monthly chart i, I like to look at monthly charts if since i'm a long-term investor i want to focus on the long term i don't want to you know take a look at all the noise that goes on in the daily and the weekly chart so Weekly, I still look at weekly charts every now and then, but primarily focus on, on, the, on the monthly chart. So what I've done here is that, I've, you know, this is a logarithmic chart. Now, what I've done is I've drawn a channel here uh, from the lows of 2009, and I've connected uh, the lows from 2009 and then the lows from uh, 2020. Ideally, when you're trying to draw a trend line or a channel, you need at least two to three points, right, where, where it kind of connects. In this case, I only have two, uh, but at the top end of the channel, you'll see that I have at least three or four different uh, touch points. 
whenever the nifty price has touched this uh, upper trend line uh, it has hovered around for a bit and then it there's been a bit of a correction that happened in december 2010 it happened in jan feb of 2015 and then again in in uh, november december of 2021 and again in september of 24. so where are we today we are edging closer to this upper trend line so whenever nifty touches this upper end of the channel there's always a bit of a reversion to mean now what i mean by that is that you'll see that there is this 50 month average this is an exponential average so whenever that happens whenever it has kind of touched this upper end of the trend line or this upper end of the channel it is hovered around for a bit and then come down to the 50 month average then again it finds a bit of support under around the 50 month average and then it goes up again again it's that's the same thing it hovered around the upper end and then it came down now every once in a while this might break this 50 month support and might come towards the lower end of the channel however for that to happen something major needs to happen like 2009 crash or a COVID so something big has to happen but in in absence of that it always hovers around this upper end of the trend line and then it, it kind of tries to correct and, and you know finds a bit of support around the 50 month moving average now that hasn't happened <laughs> over the past few years now it hasn't found support it has actually found support somewhere in, in between before the 50 uh, month average and for some reason that does not give me a lot of comfort so from my perspective i feel like nifty this price for nifty there's a possibility that it might go ahead and again hit this upper end of the trend line it could be around you know the price might be around 28,000, 28,200, 300 in that in that range. Now it could either just touch the upper end of the trend line and 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 reverse course, or you know the way it happened in 2010, 2011 time frame. You know if you can see here, it could hover around the upper end of the trend line for about a year, maybe two years. No one knows. It's very tr tricky and difficult to predict what will happen and how will price action uh, be when it does when it does happen however we can just make sure that we are prepared uh, in the eventuality of a correction in the market now again this might not be a very steep correction as well you know for all we know the price might hover around this upper end of the trend line you know 28000 29000 30000 no one knows how long will it uh, tread along this upper end of the trend line and once in a while it might even break like it happened in uh, you know november december 2010 you know it kind of broke the upper trend line upper end of the trend line or the channel for a bit and then it, it reversed course so it, it might happen here as well maybe sometime next year or in the next couple of years where it kind of touches this upper end of the channel maybe uh, hovers around it but eventually at some point it will reverse course and from my uh, uh, based on my analysis and my thinking there is a possibility that you know it might come and uh, touch this 50 period 50 month uh, average and then reverse course when will that happen anybody's guess whether it will happen for sure it will happen at some point the exact date and time is something which is which is really difficult to predict but it's important for us to understand this larger trend and and then accordingly position ourselves so that you know we are not we are prepared to make the most of most of it hope this this analysis was was useful please do consider liking and subscribing to this channel i'll continue to bring more such analysis and more such uh, insights from my experience based on the US markets and looking at the global situation. If you feel that this video would be useful to some of your friends um, who, who are also looking at this chart and also wanting to understand it, then do forward it to them as well. So until next time, stay safe and great investing.